guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? Welcome back to another How About Them Celtics video. Sam and I are here recording on Tuesday, July 18th, and we have another reaction video for you guys. So the Celtics traded Grant Williams this summer to the Dallas Mavericks in a sign-in trade, uh, creating a roughly 6.7, I think it is, $6.5 million trade exception. It's half his salary, and Grant Williams' salary was around $13.5 million, so it should be up around $6.7 million TP. It seems fairly unlikely they would use the TPE because it would put them over the tax line and all these other things. Partially, probably the reason they traded Williams in the first place, but it is an asset they have. And as we know, big big fans of TPEs in Boston. Celtics love TPEs. They they just they can't get enough. Evidently, the acronym TPE might as well stand for talking point that's evergreen. I was that off the dome or did you have that yes. in the chamber okay oh, that was phenomenal <laughs> that, was, yeah. that was really good i was impressed I thought about I thought it for you like were, 30 seconds that's it that was good i love that but traded player exception is actually what it is and luckily for us sam and i sat here looking for content to react to for you guys for about i don't know five minutes which doesn't sound like a long time but <laughs> we had for not, us we, we're usually ready <laughs> we usually had it prepared but uh thank you to mr chris forsberg friend of the show who has joined us before uh, you wrote an article pondering options for Celtics who fit into the Grant 6. Williams 2. TPE 6.2. I was close. I was close. I was almost there, but he goes over some options and we're going to react to them for you guys today. The first one is essentially Sadiq a way Bay. for the Celtics to get free guys, just in case you're wondering. pretty much. Yes, pretty much. First one is Sadiq Bay of the Atlanta Hawks, a name we've heard uh, just floated around as a guy. The Celtics could be interested in the Hawks are obviously very concerned with uh, shedding some salary this summer, as we saw with a John Collins trade. Uh, so maybe shedding Sadiq's Bay salary for not much could be something they look into. Uh, Sadiq Bay had a pretty solid season this past year, was traded from the Pistons to the Hawks, uh, hit a few threes, annoying threes in the Celtics in the, the playoffs. Noted Celtics killer, so maybe he is a guy the Celtics would go after. I wouldn't hate this, especially if it's free. The question is, I know you don't care about money. Would you Definitely take in... Care. I, in the context, I'm I'm trying to phrase this in the context that would make you care because I, I think it is relevant. Like, is Sadiq Bay worth it to put you over the cap to restrict you from making other moves, or would you rather wait, not get Sadiq Bay, and wait for something like a trade down the line? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, is, is he the guy? Is he the guy you use this on? I feel like this is the kind of thing overall that we're going to be like. They should wait till the deadline to use this. <laughs> yeah. Celtics should make sure they know exactly what they need if they're going to handicap themselves from making any other moves. You don't want to have to restrict yourself this early. With that being said, the O'Shea Brissett signing feels like it's kind of made this unnecessary. Not to mm -hmm. say it's not a decent idea Well, to take a flyer I, on a 24-year-old guy that can shoot the three. Especially I agree. putting him in a situation where he's going to be... Yeah just getting shots created for him. Like it's nobody's business. I agree. I, I feel like at the beginning of the summer, we talked a lot about how they need forward depth. And as weird as it is, I feel like they don't really need forward depth anymore. Like O'Shea Brissett's fine. Sam Hauser could step into an elevated role and Jordan Walsh looks ready to at least play a few yes. minutes. So I, I think if you're going to do this, I would rather see them land a guard that can help not necessarily make Pritchard or Brogdon more expendable, make it so you could use them as either pieces and upgrade, or if either of those guys aren't happy, which we've heard rumblings of in the past, it'll make it easier to do that. Or even a fourth big man, right? Cause you've got three or two semi often injured big men. And then Al Horford, who's turning 37 next season. So getting another guy in there who can at least give you some minutes could be valuable. I, I feel like I wouldn't necessarily want to use it on a forward, especially when your two best players also are forwards. But again, I, I mean, I wouldn't complain if CD Bay was on the team. He's a fine player; he can hit the three. So <clears throat> there is that. Next guy. There are worse guys. Agree. Dean Wade of the Cleveland Cavaliers, this being one of them. <laughs> you don't like this? Not a fan? No, I'm just teasing. Thoughts though? Yeah, you'd rather CD Bay? Well, I'd probably rather CD Bay only because I've seen him light up the Celtics a bunch of times, right? Sure. Uh, as far as Dean Wade goes, it's fine. Like, I don't think either one of these guys, if they join the Celtics is going to be a rotation piece, at least right away. It's going mm -hmm. to take some like, oh, this guy rested tonight. And then they play well when they actually get an opportunity to play. 
Bay yeah. has been up and down. We haven't seen Wade play a ton throughout his career. He hasn't had a major role, I don't think, on Cleveland he's, he's at all. He's played right? 20 minutes a night the past three okay. years. There you go. So it's they shoot about the same from three. I think Dean Wade, I'm looking at the basketball reference, he is 6'9 versus 6'7, so he's a little bit taller. I would say Sadiq Bay is probably a bit more quick. They're they're very similar. <laughs> I would say they're pretty similar players. I'd probably rather Sadiq Bay partially because, like you said, you've just seen it more uh, from a Celtic standpoint. He's played more minutes throughout his career. I mean, he played 25 minutes a night um, for the Hawks in his time there and 27 total throughout his time with the Pistons and Hawks. Me. But. Yeah, I don't think he's played that much. <laughs> Forsberg. Yeah, he started 60 games over the past three years. <laughs> he did. He did do that. Uh, he is a good defender. I don't know. It, it seems all right. The next one, Otto Porter Jr., Toronto Raptors. This is a name we've thrown around multiple mm. times. This might be my Fine. favorite. I would rather... This might be my least favorite so far. Maybe we have differing mm. opinions here. I think Otto Porter's fine, but I think if you're going to use the TPE, I'd rather use it for somebody who's not coming off a season-ending injury and is like 30, what, 3 now, like older veteran. Like Says I'd rather use somewhere. it... I, I don't... Does it? I don't no. think I see it. Um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll look right now, though. But uh, Otto Porter's fine. He was good for the Warriors last year. He's 30 right now. He'll be 31 in the middle of next season, but... I, I would just rather get like a 26 to 28 year old guy and especially not a guy who's coming off a season ending an injury. Not that he's going to injure himself again, but like I'd rather not take that added risk if you're going to use this TPE. See, I think you might as well take the risk because you're not losing anything, right? Like you really don't have anything to lose here. Maybe you lose the second round pick. Uh, but really, this is a guy that isn't going to see a ton of time regardless of who it is, according to this list so far. Why not take a swing? Like you said, Otto Porter played a big role with Golden State when they beat the Celtics in the finals. He was really That's good. two in that years series. ago at this point, though. By the time he's on the team, it's going to be two years ago, like two seasons ago. I don't know. It, whatever. The, the last time we saw him play real basketball, he put he put a real impact on the finals. They put him in the starting line. I know, but I, things. I don't like having to use that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> the last time we saw him play real basketball, that's like, it's not exactly the same, but that's like a team trading for John Isaac and saying the last time we saw him, he was real good. Let's, let's give it a chance. I, I, I'd rather, if the Celtics are going to use this to try to improve the, the level of their team, I'm not saying I would dislike Otto Porter. I would just rather trade for Wade or Bay. As minimal think, as it matters. I think of the three, Otto Porter has the best chance to have a real role in the rotation. I suppose. That's Maybe. why I like it. I understand the injury risk. But like, okay, you either use it for Otto Porter, or hypothetically don't use it at all. You might as well just. Get I, oh the yeah, guy. no. You know, if those if those are the options, I'd rather get Otto yeah. Porter. But it probably is uh, like that. Don't use yeah. it at all is like a like ninety five percent probably. Yeah, they're probably not going to. Just to clarify probably. for anybody really like rock hard <laughs> watching this, like oh my god, they're yeah. going to get a free guy. Like they won't. No. Uh, next up, Chuma Okiki on the Orlando Magic. Again, fine. He's younger. Uh, I know he missed his first season because twenty four. But he's twenty four, turning twenty five very soon. Uh, he is six foot six. He's played nineteen minutes this past season for the Magic. Only twenty seven games though. Um, career averages of seven point six points, four and a half rebounds, only thirty two percent from three, thirty eight percent from the field. The best part Don't is his it. defense. He's a solid defender, but I, I think he's the worst on the list so far. This just sounds like you're getting a worse O'Shea Brissett. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> I that, think that's, that's what it sounds like way. to me. I'd rather just give, if you're going to like bring a yeah. guy in, give up probably a second round pick in order to get him here. You might as well just put O'Shea Brissett out there and give him some real run instead of clogging up that front court a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Next up, Precious Achua, Toronto Raptors, uh, played 20.7 20. minutes. Actually. Nine points, six rebounds this past year, 48% of the field, only 27% from three. The three is not there. He's only six foot and eight if he's going to play a big man spot. But I'm not, I don't think it's a perfect comparison because I think he's relatively inefficient. But if you can get him to buy in and change his way of playing, because they've given him the ball a lot in Toronto at, or like given him the freedom to, to create his own offense, et cetera. And I don't think it's gone super well, but if he is willing to take on more of a Rob defender, catching lobs, cutting screen roll, like his athleticism could make him a pretty good Rob secondary option. 
I agree. I think this is a really good one. Mm -hmm. It may be one of the more serious needs on this list so far. Like all Mm -hmm. of these wing guys, like you kind of said at the beginning of the video, at this point is not a need. It's a luxury. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like Achua, while not necessarily needed, is the most likely to be needed with all the sure different. Okay, is Horford going to play back to backs? How healthy is Rob going to be? How these poor Zingas going to be? There's a lot of variables with Boston's big man rotation where having a fourth guy that is kind of for real wouldn't hurt you. It'd be kind of cool. Definitely. Definitely wouldn't hurt you. I wouldn't mind it. I, I think a chew is probably up there for me too. Uh, that was all the options Chris Forsberg shared. Going through, we'll share this list quick as well. Um, well, it's not an actual list, but it's just a list of player salaries. Mm-hmm. Looking down here, other guys, <clears throat> this other could potentially go after. Right. Kenrich Williams is always somebody. From everything you see, the Thunder really like him, so I don't know how willing they'd be to give him up. And if I'm the Thunder, like, and I've kept him for this long, they've extended him on a pretty good contract. Like, yes, he's like he's probably too expensive <clears throat> for what the Celtics are going to give up. JaVale McGee, that contract is a no-no, even though you want a big man, and they would give him up for free. <laughs> if they wanted him, they would have gotten him back. They sure the would. <laughs> but uh, that's probably no, like, Corkmas. Do you give up a second for Corkmas? <laughs> probably no, not. That's, that's a bad contract for them at this point. Mm. And it's expiring, so it's not the end of the world. But, yeah, not great. Uh, I don't know. There, there's really not too much else out there. Um in terms of guys that you get, you get like Zeke Naji, do they want to give him up or is he still playing minutes in uh, Denver? Right. Like we're, we're getting into the point where it's like, just don't use it. Right? Give him like, Scala back. Yeah. If, if you can, I guess maybe. No. Um, Michael Carter Williams, if they pick us option, that's fine. I don't hate him. He's, he's cool. Be fine. Local At this guy. point. Yeah. We're, we're into minimum territory now. Chris Dunn. Chris Perhaps Dunn. Chris Dunn. Back. <clears throat> Wouldn't hate Chris Dunn. Um, but at, I mean, at this point, once you get down into the minimum level, Dwayne Dedman, like, who's on here twice, <laughs> more too expensive in both places. Um, yeah, no, it feels like all the options that Chris Forsberg outlined were the best options and probably only the guys, the Celtics could Halliburton go cry away. Yeah. Right. Imagine, uh, but all interesting. I, I think a shoe was probably up there for me. I, I think it's barring that he buys into the role of not being able to create his own offense as much, obviously. Uh, and outside of that, I'd probably go. I like Sadiq Bay and Dean Wade. Those are probably up there for me. I I, I, don't, I don't mind Otto Porter either. Chumo Kiki is probably the bottom, but all solid options. I mean, if you're giving up a second round pick or two, then I don't care anyways. <laughs> but yeah. No, you got to stockpile the second round picks. So it's true. Well, this is why he stockpiles the second round picks so you can make these trades, which is good. They're not going to make a trade. I know. Well, Maybe not Take with this TPE. Viewer. You just wasted 13 minutes of your time. No, 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 no. Maybe not with this TPE, but I, I don't think they're gonna make. They're not gonna make those second round picks. There's just no way they. Make I agree with that. Picks. They, they are not trading for uh, any TPE stuff. Make no. I mistake. doubt it. I doubt it. When's the last they time they gonna, actually use? The they TPE? are gonna say, "Here's this thing you can just write about over and over again." When's there the last time they used a TPE? Josh Richardson. Uh, they did right? something with the Hayward TPE. They got Fournier. And Josh Richardson. Josh Richardson was into the Horford TPE, the rest of it. I the think. Hayward? The Hayward. Maybe. Yeah, sorry, that's what I mean. And then, then they traded Fournier, got a TPE for him, but that's the one they didn't use. They didn't use that. Mm-hmm. That Anyways. was when the Knicks finished the Celtics. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate y'all very much. Uh, make sure to subscribe to How About Them Celtics. Leave us the ratings on Spotify and Apple if you do listen to us on those platforms. And I uh, appreciate you guys for tuning in. I'll let Sam take us out. Yes. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube. Join 600, I mean, 964 others. Selling a short. I was, I was thrown off by the extra one. I didn't think there was four. <laughs> was like three. Thank you for whoever that person was. Uh, make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily uploads. We were hitting it all summer making sure you guys are getting more content every single day. And if any news breaks, we're on top of that too. We did one on the Jay Scrub signing on Saturday. I was in the car. Make sure you don't miss anything like that. You don't want to miss me in the car. You can listen to us on Spotify and Apple for full-length pods. Follow us. Leave a nice five-star review. And say some nice words there. You can follow social medias at How About Them Seas, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. The Facebook page is just the name of the podcast. You can find all live streams there as well as YouTube. 
You can follow Jack at Jack's One NBA on Twitter. You can follow me at Sam LaFrance NBA. That's it for us, Bob.